I'm going to make a willow obelisk to grow sweet peas up and this particular one is going to have um, a sculpture of a dragonfly on the top but if you were going to copy this that might be a bit advanced but you'll get all of the skills needed from the beginning part and this one's going to have some crisscrosses as a pattern instead of a spiral but I'll show you that in a minute um, so you can do this by, you need to get some big sticks that are going to be your uprights and you could just put those in your garden and dig them in and then walk around. But I've got a willow hoop that I stick mine into, okay? Uh, which I am going to do now. And you want them evenly spaced. So I've got 10 of these really long sticks. So they need to be evenly spaced around this hoop. one in there and then I go completely opposite and put one in and then that helps them be nicely spaced. Two. So that means, oops, I've not made one in this space before so let's hope that it works. <laughs> uh, so that means we've got four to go in each half. Melody or Kobe, yeah. can you just find me an, an elastic band, please? I've forgotten that I... Thanks. Thank you. Ah, thank you. I forgot. You need an elastic band. <laughs> okay. elastic band you can see, around up there and then just get a stick or something to pop in just to hold it together that's just temporary we're going to get rid of that in a minute all right so um, sticks normally have a bit of a bend in them especially at the bottom so what I do is I just position them all to, to take advantage of that bend look so we can have a little bulbousy thing going on out nicely like this right and then when we've done that we can just see if maybe we could should have positioned them a bit better so that one there needs to come over a little bit just a little bit oh, it doesn't really matter it's a rustic natural thing uh, so it can be a bit rustic and natural okay, so that that needs to be done to worry too much Screaming, but, but that's fine. Alright, go on then. Just try and get in the video. Uh, always got a cup of tea on the go. I think you should. There we are. Right. I've got some beautiful red willow here. Now this is called Brittany. I buy my willow from Musgroves. Musgrove's Willow in Western Zoyland in Somerset and they sell amazingly beautiful willow that's perfectly grown they know what they're doing and this is some of their willow it's beautiful okay so this hasn't been soaked because it's fresh still so it's all pliable okay so we, we might use the butt end or the tip end um, so if I say the butt or the tip, 
The tip's the thin bit, the butt's the fat bit. Got a fat butt. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. Um, so we get the tips to begin with. Uh, I'll start here. And we put the tips, one behind and one in front of one of our uprights. Doesn't matter which one. And we can wrap it, the one that's behind around, and it pairs up with the one that's in front there wrap this one that's from in front around and it pairs up with the one that's at the back. Yeah? So we're like that. And then we twist them together until you get to your next stick. And then you put one behind like that. All right, so. So we keep on doing that until we've gone halfway around. So we need to have five sticks. So one, two, three. So doing this just stops everything from falling off. Four. And actually, if you've got one that's stick that's going in a funny direction, now's a good time to put it where you want it. You've got to be in charge of it. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now these are the other five sticks. We're going to get two more, and this is just to start it off so that it doesn't all just fall off. All right, so this is we've, we've, so we've gone up to here with these two. We're going to finish those off in a minute, and we're just going to start on this one. Now, bend it out so it's got that curve coming out one in front, one behind. And bring the behind. Bring them up so they pair up and then twisting around and around. And then one bit goes behind. Okay. So now we've got that one on, we can join this one up to it and go back. So that that's the one that we just put in. We could join this up to it and that makes it even stronger, doesn't it, if it's together. So the, the closer you get to the butts, the less twists you'll be able to do because it's thicker, yeah? So the tip bits, you can twist round and round lots of times. And then look, you, you can't twist it around so many times because it's so thick. So you come in. And now, because I don't want this to fall off when it's all finished, I'm going to go underneath the twist that I've already done. And twist again. And I'm going to join those up together. All right, so it kind of captures that. Yeah. So it's gone underneath it, but then it's on top of it and it just holds it all together. Alright? So. Right. Now, that's gone behind, but I'm going to leave that behind there. Um, and it can just stay there and look really rustic, or you could get an adult to cut it off at the end. Alright? So I'm just going to leave it there like that. So, you know, I might cut that off at the end, but it can stay like it. It doesn't really matter because it, it could just be something else with the sweet pea to grab onto if it's sweet peas that you're growing. I love sweet peas. So, around, twisty, twisty, and behind. And look, we've come to the beginning where we started. So this one, I'm going to make it come underneath those. That kind of hooks it on listing a bit that's it so at this stage it will wobble about and you just gotta be firm with it all right put it where you want it you're in charge all right there we go so put that there so we're going to carry on with these and i'm going to leave that one behind that stick because it looks better like that if you can it depends where they end up we'll go right there. and then leave that one behind that stick first loop on. All right? Oh, but that's not even in the bag. Let's do a bit, more. A bit of rejiggery pokery up here. It's a technical term, jiggery pokery. <laughs> there. 
Right now, so that was just the first band that you start with the tips. For the rest of the time, we're going to start with the butts. All right, because that was just the first time. So we'll just do two at a time. So I've got another two wands. And I'm going to start over here and I'm going to put the butt of one behind this stick and the butt of the other one behind this stick. That's it. And where they meet up, yeah, so behind and behind, and where they meet up here, we're going to do, just as we were doing before, sort of wrap cross them over each other, so it's twist around each other. And then one behind and one in front. Twisty, twisty, one behind and one in front. Now, so this is quite repetitive. We're going to have to do this a lot because th this is for a customer. So for me, I need a good, strong band of weave so that it, it's value for them. But you could just do it so it's just a little bit like this if you've just got a bit of willow or a bit of whatever you're using. Um, you don't have to do it as much as me. But you need to do it enough so it's going to last for at least this year's sweet peas. Okay. So, so I'm twisting them around. Look, and, and the closer to the tip, tip I get, the more I'm twisting them again. Yeah, because it, it will take more twists in the distance. Right, so you see, I've started here and here. So this time, I'm going to start here and here. By doing that, um, just it, you know, regardless as to where you end off, you should always start um, either before or after your last, the first two that you put in. So that's where I started last time. And the purpose of doing that is it dis it sh shares the strength around, so it's not all strong on one side and weak on another side, because the, the butt ends are the kind of the strong bits. I've got another two bits of willow. So that's where I put the last two in, I've just done. So the butts of these are here. So I'm going to start here and here. Like that. And I'm going to pick these up and just twist them with it. It doesn't matter if they don't reach. times and you will twist it more the more the closer to the tip that you get oh gosh. and then that'll keep it nice and strong and together yeah uh, that's the one that I've just put in so I want this one and this one next oh there you go I went in last time. So I want to go here and here again. Yeah, so do you see what I mean about not having all of the butts in the same place? It makes it strong everywhere. So I'll put that one there and that one there. That's it. And of course, if you don't do it exactly like this, it doesn't actually a bit artistic so it doesn't matter if it doesn't really look like mine this is just how I do it you should put a bit of your own personality into it yeah. 
I like to um, uh, keep on spotting mine together so that in order for it to look nice and strong. I need mine to be round because it's for a customer. So I'm gonna push out like that. Makes it a bit rounder. If you're just doing it for yourself, you might like it like that, and that's okay. Um, I've got to be a little bit more fussy because I'm selling this. Okay. Like that. And the last ones went in here, so I want to start on these two in order to spread the strength. you can see but this one's particularly thin so you you do want them to be roughly the same same look so that one's particularly fat and that one's particularly thin so if you've got them so they are roughly the same size it helps yeah so you don't have one that's really big one that's little okay so we were on those two last we're on these two now hurt a bit. My hands hurt sometimes from doing it. There's a straightish bit there so I'm going to do that. Finish there so I can see the two next. Yeah, so if you didn't um, start you'd have one side that was really thick and the other side would be all thin and spindly. All right, so you can see as we go round, it should should all look like it's about the same same bands of weave, same uh, size bands of weave all the way around because we've not started in the same place. Bring it 
down here, and go around there, and then bring it back up first. So it's really cheap. That one there, put that one there, that's fine. So it might look, make it look a bit more attractive. around again if I end around here I might leave a little bit on purpose just to pull that up a bit more just to make it look yeah that it looks better doesn't it just to make it look you don't have to care about that but again it's just because I'm selling this to somebody take this bottom bit off. I promise it won't fall apart. Mm -hmm. Like so, we use the there, so we're gonna go on these. So the techniques that I'm showing you not the law. In fact, most of it I've made up. Um, so there's nothing to say if you do it a different way that that's wrong. It's just a different way. Okay, because I, I started off as a hurdle maker and then I have uh, used the bit of knowledge that I had making hurdles and just translated that into making other things. So I'm not saying that this is the right way, it's just the way that I do it. And they, it seems to work, <laughs> so I'm going with it. All right, okay, so I'm back here. Look, actually, I could just undo one of those, so I've ended here. Look, this is a nice, big, strong bit. I'm going to come back down and do this again. So he's still falling down, isn't he? Okay, so I'm going to come down here. And, and I liken this to sewing. You know, like when you sew, so I'm going to go in there. Nobody's even known now that there was a problem there. There, it's gone. It's better, isn't it? I like that more. Uh, I think I'm going to put a couple more bits in still. I want it to be strong. So that's where I started last time. So I'm going to start on these two. I've stopped to look here because this is a little bit like over there when we did that bit sewing. A little bit baggy. Kind of tempted. Yeah, do you know what? I think I'm going to. Hold that up a bit. Because it's, it's not as bad as the other one over there, but still. Okay. So I kind of want to go down from behind. So I'll go down with this one. Up 
funny putting this into words for you because I just normally do this without even thinking so it makes it a bit more complicated having to describe what I'm doing. So yeah, that's complicated a bit. Don't worry about that. Okay, so, right. I think now I'm going to finish off this layer. So again, we're going to do something a bit different. We put the tips in again and we do this like we did before, starting on the opposite side. So I'm going to start here. I've got this bit. I'm going to use that bit. I'm going to put the tips here. Now, I don't really want to come round like that, only because in a minute I'm going to want to stick some willow down here. So I'm going to leave it poking out over there. This bit that I've got left lying out wouldn't normally be there, would it? It's just because I used its partner to do this, this bit of sewing. So I'm going to just grab him onto that. And just twist them as many times as I can. Like that. So then we want to do go around five again, remember? Half of them. So one, two. as well. Not really helpful. <laughs> Take him away, Let. It's a good boy. Come on, my friend. <laughs> Kids on lockdown. There we are. That's what you've got to deal with. <laughs> so I've gone halfway round. So now I'm going to start here. So I'm just going to leave those for a minute. I'm going to get another two. So tips in because we're starting and finishing off tips in. this way just stops it from undoing like at the bottom and stopping it from falling off this is gonna stop it from boinging up boinging is another technical term that I like to use right so uh, that's where I started on this this one so now we're, we're gonna have a bit of an overlap that's it so it goes on top um, and we want these to finish off at the back really so from here that's easy i'm gonna put a little crease in there and go underneath this so it's under there and pop that one and he finishes off at the back and this one i'm gonna go from the back underneath like that and then under there and then he'll finish off at the back and it's better that that one there is just the right size it's, it's, it's behind this stick um, and that stops it from unboinging. <laughs> it's boinging is one of the good terms I'm using. There we are. So we're going to do this with this. Toby, I don't know if that's actually helping me. <laughs> Thank you, mate. if they can hear what I'm saying. That's a good idea, isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> so, that's going to go. Right, so, look, I've got the shortest one on the outside. It's kind of just a little bit better. And I'm going to put him under here so he goes behind the stick. Like that. That's going to hold that in place. This one, uh, I want to uh, go from inside underneath then over here behind that stick 
Now, if you're just making this for yourself, that probably doesn't matter. But for me, making it for a customer, if all of the ends are on the inside, so you can't see them so much, it's probably just a bit better. Right, and now I'm going to take this off. Uh, might be a bit scary, because it could all fall apart. It's not going to. That's what people think. Okay. So, stand on that. Yeah, look at that. Didn't fall apart. I've got that to do another one another day. going to be five foot tall so I need to just move the camera up a bit I think. Um, and as we're going around this time we really need to work on spacing these out because they're, they're all a bit tickety-tickety another technical term tickety-tickety so we're going to put the tips in around one stick and we're not going to fold them over because I don't want this to be too tight because we've got to get bits of willow in through here in a minute we're going to cross them over and as we're doing this we need the willow that we're using to go round with this willow to make this space out a bit, alright? So, cross them over a couple of times and put one behind. This one's all the way back there, so we, we want this to try and hold this in place. So hold in place a little bit more as we go, but we try and put it where we want it. I want it out there. And the closer to the butt we get, the less times that we've got to cross them over here because it gets thicker. Just um, making 
for the fix of kind of where I want them to be. See, so they kind of go in a bit like that, a bit more. They hold these in place a bit more, the upright. Cross, cross, behind there. Look, it's a bit better, isn't it? That's it. That's it. Now the willow's a bit stronger, you see how it's holding it in place. And here, I'm just going to put it above these. So we're going to go backwards put it on top and then that hold it in place. Right. Bit of a roller coaster thing going on so I'm gonna try and make it all the same height. Ish. <laughs> crisscross pattern now. It's quite complicated. So get bits of willow and go through here. So I'm going to go on the right hand side of each stick. Okay, and I'm going to go in front of this stick. Yeah. And behind I think one of the over there. right hand side of this stick, in front of this stick, and beside this stick. And we're going in between the weave, that's why we didn't want it too tight. We're going to go in there, and then we're going to go in down there. And you push it in plenty, so it doesn't pop out again, make it nice and strong. Okay, so we're going to go in here, front, by the side. in front, by the side. See, it's a bit of a rhythm going on. Same thing, over and over. Side, in front, by the side. How are we doing? I'm not going to worry about these too much at the moment. Let's sort them out in a minute. Some of your willow is a bit smaller, this would be the bit to do the sm with the smaller willow. Yeah, make it a bit easier for you. If it's all the same size like mine is, you just deal with that. But if, if you've got some stuff that's bigger, use it on that. And if some of your stuff is smaller, you use it on this. So by the side of this stick, in front of this stick, by the side of that stick. Yeah. To the right in front to the left. Okay. So to the right, in front, to the left. Notice 
notice I'm doing it flat in, yeah, to the butt in there, to the right, and front to the left. All right, and I've got back to the beginning again. It's all going that way. So now we need to do them all the other way. Okay. So we're going to go in on the left, in on the left. go in front of your piece of willow but behind a stick so I'll come in on the left I'm going to go in always in front of the willow but behind the big stick and then in front of that piece of willow and to the side to the other side look so that each stick upright has got one either side and it will at the top as well and it's going to make this crisscross, it's nice and strong. Okay, so that one went in there. So this one's going to go in here. So this time we're working around this way. And we're going to go to the right, in front of the bit of willow, but behind the big stick. And then in front of the bit of willow, and to the side of this stick. Is that complicated? So we keep on doing that, alright, so we've gone in there, so now we need to go in here. So we're going to go to the side, in front of the willow, behind the big stick, in front of the willow, beside the stick. And you can watch this over and over again, try and help you. Now you don't have to make it as complicated as this if you don't want to, this is just how I do it for my clients. So it looks a bit special. Get it in that one. Right, you might every now and then get one that's really tricky to get in because it's a bit tight. That's okay. Might have to just pay a bit more attention. Right, I think this is the last one. Side that one in front of this one, behind the big stick, in front of the piece of willow, and beside the big stick. And there it is. Right, and the reason that we do that, you can see how strong this is. There's no bits flapping about. It's all really pucker, as Jen and Oliver would say. Right, so the thing to do now is just see it goes down there, it's gone a bit roller coaster again. Now all these bits that are coming up here, I actually quite like it like that. 
that but they're to get weaved in this is kind of quite complicated but we'll do our best so these two now we've done that we want to get get these out of the way so that one's going to go behind there and we'll put that one behind there all right might get an adult to cut those off later we'll wait and see So I'm just going to start here, just because it's the bit that's in front of me. Uh, I've got these two. So I'm going to lay them down that way, because that's the way that I weave. I'm going to twist them like we've been doing, so it's kind of the same. And go behind and in front, leaving these ones there. So once we've gone behind and in front a couple, and these are getting smaller, Take these down. Like that. I'm working with two bits each side now, look. So I've taken them from here as well. Okay. With the pairs, go round like that, behind and in front. Just work with pairs for a little while. Leave them twist, twist, behind, in front. Twist, twist, behind, in front. Twist, twist, behind, in front. Right now I've got a bit of a flat bit again, so I'm going to make that round. Get the right shape. Right, so these are getting thinner now, so I can take a couple more. It doesn't matter what order you do this in, it's not all at the same time from one side, so it's evenly dispersed here. So twist, twist, behind. Twist these round, go behind and in front. Oh, my husband's got me tea. Thanks. Good job. So, twist behind and in front. I'm going to take some more down. So, all these are just going to get weaved in. And it makes it really strong. Nothing can fall apart because it's all really tangled in each other. Twist, twist, behind. Twist. A bit of banana shape going on. in front and look it's getting a bit it's getting tougher so I'm going to take these down as well twist them behind in front twist twist behind and bring it in front it's getting a bit small if there were some there I'd take them but there aren't so I'm just going to take them from the next one So look, there's some here. I'm just going to take them now as I twist them. Right, mate. You I'm going to help you do the cooking in a minute. Mm. There he is. Okay. I want to get past it, but I don't want to be caught in the thing. Well, I'm going to take these now. Go on then. Right. So I've got those two that were up there. Twist, twist. Twist, twist. You see I'm building a nice, quite a good sized band of weave here just by using the leftover bits from the crisscrosses. There's only two lots coming up, so I'm going to take these now anyway.
packaging band weave where I go in with the tips. But I won't need to do sort of like five and then five because it's so narrow. So um, I just need two bits of willow for this. Yeah, because before I was starting and going halfway around. Well, it's so narrow now, I don't need to do that. That was just because the, the willow had to go so far for the circumference. Um, so I'm just going to join them on to these. So I'm just put one behind, behind this this bit. And I'm probably going to bring them out front just so he doesn't untangle in one this way. So I've now got one from the two. And this time as I go around, I want to make sure it's really tight because this is part of it straight. Right, so this is actually getting quite stiff now because it's the gap's quite small and the willow's quite thick, so it makes it really hard. Um, so I'm going to say that I'm not going to do too much more. That might be enough because it is getting really hard. So I'm going to put that one in there like we did before. So the one that comes out in front gets put behind. And the one that's coming from behind goes underneath from behind in front and then in front of there. Yeah. You'll probably want to get an adult maybe to trim this up a bit later, but if you don't, it doesn't matter, you can just hide that and go around with it. the bit with the elastic band okay um, so we take this off take the elastic band away we get a piece of willow and we pop it in through the middle like that hold it really tight and then bring this out to the side or out through a gap somewhere and then we really tightly twist it around like this. Okay. So it's going round and round. Really strong look. Yeah, see how nice and strong that looks. And then to tie it off. Keep your thumb on that, stop it unraveling, no matter what you do, you don't want it to unravel. Okay, so where you first started, look, you've got a couple like gaps, little cornery bits almost. So the tip, can you go up in that little gap? Yeah, 
like that. Now again, I've made this up, so I don't know whether it's right or wrong, it just works. So if you do it a bit different and it works, it's fine. So I've come from here and I've gone up through that gap, creating this little diagonal. I get my tip. I'm going to go in behind that diagonal with the tip. We call this tying in, and it's just to stop things from undoing. And I'm going to go back around this way, look, and go for that little figure of eight. So I'm good. I've gone around the bottom once, and now it's almost a little bit like I'm sewing a knot. I'm going to go round and round here a couple of times. A bit like I'm sewing in order for it to not all undo. You can see the skin's coming off a bit. Okay, that doesn't really matter, it doesn't it hurt. There we are. I mean, it's better if that doesn't happen, but it's happened. There we are, so that's kind of going to hold it on. And then um, from there, most of the time, all these bits would be cut off, yeah, just to finish it. But I'm actually going to build a sculpture so it'd be attached on with these bits. And there'd be a photo at the end, because I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's really complicated. But there'd just be a photo at the end with the sculpture on the top. Okay, I hope that's all right.